Well, thank you, Greg, and good afternoon, everyone. My part of this presentation is is to take all that Tom and Greg have presented so far and guide it through the farm gate, if you will. So go with me mentally through the farm gate. We're going on to the actual farm here in the next uh, five to ten minutes. All that we do and all that we say will be of very little value if we do not follow through on four R's with the grower. Grower adoption, as we see it here in Ohio, is absolutely vital to the success of this venture, to the success of it. Let me share with you a very brief version of what we here at Moral Companies do to promote 4R as a fundamental driver of our fertility program with our growers. But first, just a, just a wee bit about our company. Our main plant is in Ohio, in the town of the same name, Moral. We're 60 miles due north of Columbus. We make liquid fertilizers by reacting phosphoric acid with ammonia to make a liquid 1034O and we use that product in various farms for in furrow fertilization. We also manufacture delayed and control release liquid nitrogen products and distribute these throughout the United States and a number of foreign countries. We market to other major producers, be they wholesalers, uh, dealers, turf and lawn and garden companies. And we also go directly to farmers through our main plant and a retail facility over in Caledonia, Ohio. We supply both liquid and dry products for our Central Ohio Farmers Cooperative Company. Uh, their retail facilities serve a four-county area uh, immediately north of Columbus. We custom apply product on about 200,000 acres using our own certified custom applicators and our own equipment. The principal crops grown in our area are corn, soybeans, and wheat. We have a significant number of swine and poultry operations also within our trade area. We are almost completely dry land cropping with just a wee bit of irrigation. Our trade area is split, as both the previous presenters have shown you, uh, down the middle of that ridge that separates Lake Erie fed uh, watershed from the Ohio River fed watershed that stretches laterally across central Ohio. So the 4R program is extremely important to us because our growers can influence water quality for both Lake Erie and the Mississippi River system. We approach our growers from two angles. First, there is the current practice angle. By explaining the meaning of the 4Rs in the proper way, our growers quickly realize that they're doing most everything outlined in this program already. They see at the outset that 4Rs is not going to be something that forces them to radically alter their practices. Quite the contrary, it serves to highlight the great job most all of them are already doing, particularly the ones who are on our fertility management program. The second angle is purely economic. You see, if our program, which mirrors the principles of 4R, maximizes the grower's yield potential, his ROI is then maxed, uptake to the plant is optimal, and the environmental impact is acceptable, and in most all cases reduced. We accomplish this by going within each individual field with our assessment, our discovery, our recommendation, and our application. So let's go take a look at one of these grower fields and see just how the program works. You're looking at a 74-acre field. It is adjacent to the Sandusky, Sandusky River, or a tributary thereof, and it drains right into Sandusky Bay in, in Lake Erie. The 30 reference points you see throughout this field are actually data points. Uh, this is a soil test point. We pulled the sample at each one of these 30 locations, and the results come back from a local lab here in Ohio called Spectrum. And when we get them back, you can see across the top, we have a min-max average on all the way from pH through and including zinc, all the way from the first sample site to the 30th. And for you guys that are good on, uh, on technology, you can understand that if we have that salt test point and it's precise on our GPS, we then have a data point. So keep that in mind. We look at, of course, everything we can look at through a surficial soil test. And we're looking at soil type here, and you can see that this, this field is a silt loam. You can see that the border strip here that I'm 
that uh, is outlined in darker brown is actually uh, subject to periodic flooding. So that is a factor that we consider when we make our recommendations. It is a silt loam soil. You can see here the organic matter at the surface. I'm going to go through these speedily because I understand two things. It's Friday afternoon, and uh, we're running a little bit behind. Here's the cation exchange capacity of the field at the surface. Here's the P3 at the surface. And here's the K, the potash, at the surface. We've got our pH superficially, and let's go in and look. If you come down to the bottom of each of these slides, you will see the minimum pH here is on, on the scales of 5, max 6, 8, mean 5.48. You can see that we have it color-coded for the grower so that he understands where he's low, medium, and high within the field itself. Buffered pH at the surface. And a product summary. So let's see what we're going to do with this guy. We're going to, this, this guy tells us what he wants to do in terms of yield on this field. We're looking at a two year picture here. So the first year he's going to, his plan is to grow corn. The second year he's going to grow soybeans. His yield target, it's very hard to see. It's right in under the K2O recommendation and the P205, but it's right in this area where the pointer is. He's looking for 200 bushel corn and 60 bushel beans. And given his yield data from the past, we determine that to be a reasonable yield goal for this, for this field under normal circumstances. So our recommendation is going to cover 74 acres. The overall average rate of potash would be 22 pounds to the acre. Understand it on a two-year basis here. We're fertilizing with potash mainly for the soybeans. We're only going to apply, though, uh, on 11 of those acres. And our average on those 11 is going to be 147 pounds. Okay. So when you think back to what Greg and, and, and Tom have told you about uh, the four hours time placement source uh, we're using this potash because, uh, of course, the beans in particular need potassium. But we're cutting back as much as we possibly can, and you see only impacting 11 acres here with the application. Why? Because the K levels were adequate on the rest of the soils. On the lime, we need to move the pH, so we're going to apply lime on 70 of the 74 acres, and we're going to put it on at the tri-state recommendation of roughly 3 tons, a U.S. short ton per acre. On the P205, again, on 74 acres, we're only, going to, we're only going to put MAP out there on 54 of the 74 acres. Again, the reason is very sound. It's because uh, there is adequate P in there to match this tri-state recommendation for corn and beans on this field for the next two years. So are we, we're doing what we need as far as rate and, and, uh, and source. Here you see where we will and will not be applying the map. And on this one, you will see again the surface and the application. Note that they're very similar. Note again, the potash recommendation. These were, these were the spots requiring the most amount of potash. The rest of the field was pretty, ad pretty adequate. as you can see here. This is the normal lime recommendation from Tri-State, as I said. Now, you may be asking, now, how, how are we going to do that? Well, in the old days, when I grew up in this business, we would just go out there and spread 150 pounds of this and 200 pounds of that, and we were done. Thank God we now have the technology to be able to do something meaningful on that, on that uh, field, and that would mean where we've got good adequate levels, where our pH is in balance, we leave it alone and let it produce. 
We don't overapply, nor do we underapply, but we balance the fertility needs because we have the equipment, technology, and know-how to do that today. Uh, it's, it's a great, great improvement in agriculture. I can't overstress that. I guess I would close by, by saying this. Remember always, uh, when, we get, when we get really into these things, folks, that this field that we just looked at uh, from an arm's length basis and, and very objectively is someone's birthright. Someone came to this country, tiled this field, and created this ground and managed to feed and sustain their, not only their family but many others through the pr productivity of this soil. Uh, we've been given a, a valuable gift. The farmer understands this. He's not out there squandering his resources. He's not out there to rape, pillage, and burn uh, the God-given uh, uh, land that's been put in his in his uh, control. So we're here to help them in any way we can. The four hours is a wonderful thing, and we we are absolutely behind it, along with many other retailers in Ohio. And we think that this will catch and go in many other states in the nation. Uh, with that, I'll conclude and turn it back over to the moderator. Thank you. Thank you.